And I'd like to start off with uh, introducing Dennis Brennan. Dennis has been on the show in the past talking about photography and art uh, and showing you some of the, uh, the work that he does and trying to give you some tips and, and uh, information to help uh, you and your photography. But Dennis is going to do a build along of one of his kits. He's a manufacturer, uh, has been for many, many years. Uh, his products are well known in the, in, in the industry and, and to modelers all over. Uh, so he's going to build one of his kits uh, on our show. And he's here tonight to tell you a little bit about his company and about the, uh, the model that he's gonna be building. Dennis, welcome. Oh, hi, Jim. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm here and um rearing to get going here a um, little bit about me um if you haven't already heard i've been in business since 1997 and uh started selling ballast and the reason i started selling ballast is because there wasn't ballast that i liked for the o-scale market and so i went out and found some and um I've been selling it ever since. It was a big hit when it first hit the market and it still continues to be uh, unmatched. So um, uh, if you're in the market for ballast, check it out. That's brennansmodelrr.com. Um, but I sell more than that. Uh, I, I sell things and have developed kits that it didn't exist. Um, there might have been some facsimile, but nothing that really met what I wanted. And so one of the first kits I came out with was a chain link fence kit. Okay. Well, that's not what we want to see, but I will get, I will get, <laughs> <laughs> I will get, well, actually, since this picture is here, we'll talk about this for an instant. If you're trying to model something, and this is what I base my modeling on, if you're trying to model something like tracks running in the street, don't just assume that you know what it looks like. Because nine times out of 10, what you think it looks like is really not the actual thing. So what I do is I will go and find what I'm looking for, take a photograph of it, um, take a notebook with me with pen and write notes and I'll even take a tape measure and measure things. Not that I'm a rivet counter, I'm not, but it, it takes just as much time to do something wrong as it does to do it right. So <laughs> um, I, 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 always, I always try to, to go and research something. If I'm building a retaining wall, I'll go out and I'll look at retaining walls and take a picture and take some measurements. It's that simple. All right, so now let me see if I can figure out how to get myself back there, back to where I want. Uh, this chain link fence, there isn't any kit even today that matches this. And I'm not trying to feather my own nest here. It's just that nobody ever gets it right. Um, and uh, I went, took scores of pictures of commercial chain link fences. Then I went to a commercial fence company <laughs> and I got information from them right down to a shop drawing of a chain link fence. So. Then I went out to find the pieces that fit it. Now you solder the framework together and the, the, um, the mesh is the right size. I even measured the mesh and then I went and found nylon material that exactly matches that size mesh. And so my fence is constructed just like a real chain link fence. And that's why it looks, it's, it looks as real as it does because it's based on the real thing. Um, a lot of guys, well, I've seen some people use window screen or they'll use dowels, um, or there's some people who are selling chain link fence kits that's made out of um, laser cut wood. 
Well, that doesn't work because wood is flat. I mean, so um, at any rate, the point is I go through a lot of trouble to get things right. And of course, you have to make compromises here and there. But uh, like I said, I'm not a rivet counter. And so um, uh, I, I'll, I will make an acceptable compromise. Now, if you can see this, this is my freight dock kit. Now, I didn't assume that I knew how a freight dock was made. I went down, there happened to be an abandoned freight dock right in my town in Independence next to um, a railroad station that's now the Independence Depot, but I think it formerly was a Gulf Mobile in Ohio rail line. And this, um, this uh, freight, freight dock was falling apart. It was in the weeds. And so I dug out underneath it to see how it was supported. And I made this one exactly like that. It's an exact scale model, except I shortened, I shortened it just a bit. And the only reason I shortened it is because I needed to fit it into a certain size box. So I made it 48 feet instead of 50. So, um, but it's, it's, it looks real because it's based on a real, um, a real doc. And let's see here. Okay, my wooden fence kit. Um, I like individual boards. Uh, um, I'm considering doing um, a laser cut wooden fence kit, which I can still make um, uh, pretty accurately. What I won't do though, is make a, a laser cut strip of wood. Um, to go over the top of it because I think, or to go over the end of it for all the panels because there's no spacing then. Um, I'll still include an individual boards. Right now you have to put it, the whole thing together. Um, uh, it's not hard, but I could make it simpler. And so uh, let's see what else we have. All right, this is a fun, this was a fun, I sell call. And it's real coal. It's anthracite coal, right from the Redding Mines in Pennsylvania. And this was kind of a fun shot to do. Um, talk a little bit about that. You'll notice um, I actually have um, done sort of in a time exposure with this to catch the coal filling up the, the truck. Everybody had to really stand still and hold their positions for me to do that. Actually, um, what I did is I took a piece of clear plastic and I cemented coal over it. And then I just attached it to the end of the conveyor and put the other end in the truck. It was that simple. Um, otherwise, I didn't have, it was a static scene. You wouldn't see any coal going out. Now, I have to admit, it looks like that's pouring in there. So I have to, uh, I have to say that it's a time exposure and I held the exposure for a while. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody thinks they know what railroad crossings look like? Well, nine out of 10 times you don't. Um, I've seen it done wrong over and over and over again. And this, there's very few wooden railroad cross crossings left these days, but you can find them. And since most of us are modeling back in the, well, a lot of us anyway, are modeling in the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, they were quite common, just like the wooden freight dock. They were quite common. And I don't care where you go, but typical railroad crossings have two boards on the outside of the rail, four boards on the inside of the rail, or six boards in this case. Uh, one, two, no, I guess it's about. At any rate, what they do is they use ties. One, two, three, four, five, right. They use ties is what they use. That's what it is. And um, the reason they're staggered here is because this 
track was going across the street at an angle and on a slight curve. And uh, this is another pet peeve of mine. I've seen curved um, kits for curves where <laughs> they actually have cut the pieces of wood in a curve to fit your to to fit your track. That's not correct. It really bugs me because what what the railroads do is they use their ties and they stagger them and they just they just it, it, it's like uh, they just kind of angle each tie slightly. So it's a series of straight lines that form a curve. They don't cut. They don't cut their tie into the shape of the curve. Now, of course, our curves are a lot sharper, but I have done it on uh, uh, an 072 curve um, without having to cut any ties. You just stagger them, and and you just you just use you you can still use the full length of the tie. You just have to you just have to angle it each time. So that's all there is to that. Um, Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Dennis, right. you've got three minutes. Okay. Well, uh, for the build, um, I'm going to do on November 1st, we are going to do um, the Sankey Wanky Coffee Company. That's the Sankey Wanky, and I will be going through it step by step um, and telling you exactly how I do it. And I will be, you'll be, if you want to do the build um, with me, um, I will talk about each section and then you can go home and do it. Um, uh, and the next week uh, we'll come and look at it again. Um, but I will tell you step by step how it's done. And you can see my instructions assume that you've never done anything like this before. Um, uh, I, they're complete. I tell you how to do everything, painting, gluing, what kind of glue to use, when to do it. There's a certain sequence. Any modeler will tell you there's sequences you have to follow when building kits. And if you get out of sequence, you can screw yourself. I've done it, <laughs> been there. And so I try to make my instructions foolproof. At any rate, if you want the kit, um, uh, starting I think on the 16th um, and for two weeks you can buy the kit and you'll get a 10% discount um, and all you need to do is put in the words the word one word new track new tracks okay um, you put that in and um, uh, and that'll give you the that'll automatically give you the discount if you have a problem for some reason, just give me a call. Tell me it's for the build. Um, give me the secret password and I'll give you the 10%. How's that for a deal? All right. So um, back to you, Jim.